It's never going to make sense. It's never going to be obvious. You're never going to walk out your door and see the obvious way that you want to go. And if you do, it's a trap. If you do go down the path that's already laid for you, it's going to take you to all the destinations that are already known. It's going to take you to all of the places that instinct drove the people before you. But if you want to go somewhere unique, if you want to go somewhere that only you would go, if you want to create something new and really live a life that was meant for you because it's literally crafted by you, you have to take the first steps on faith. And as Rumi said, as you start to walk out on the way, the way appears. So as you're looking at the choices that are before you, where you've got a path that's well trodden, you've got a path that literally is invisible and won't become something until you step on it, you have to understand that that's what this life is meant to be and that the only frustration that you will look back on with tremendous regret is knowing that you did what was easy even though it wasn't you. There's some mechanism inside of us. There's something that wants us to walk a path that's never been walked before. And the thing that makes it so hard is right now inside of you is a desperate desire for that to be easy. But it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard. You're going to fail. You're going to stumble. You're going to fall on your face. And thank God. Because as Muhammad Ali said, only a man who knows what it's like to be defeated can reach down to the bottom of his soul and come up with the extra ounce of power it takes to win when the match is even. So what you have to ask yourself is, what do you want? Do you want it to be easy? Do you want the path to be well-worn? Or do you want the path to be yours? Do you want to know that inside of you is something that you can reach into and grab and that will be there at the moment that you most need it. Do you want to know that you're that type of person? Because if you do, you have to be willing to walk the path that doesn't exist. You have to be willing to tread through the brambles. You have to be willing to fall because it is in that process of failure and pain and agony and suffering that you will become. That's the process that will make you you. That's the process that will shape you. It's the suffering that gives you the reserves to draw on when you need them most. So when you ask for safety, when you ask for ease, know that you're saying a prayer for weakness. And when you take the hard way, know that you're forging yourself. When you make those demands, know that you're building a reserve tank that will be there at the moment when you need it. When you walk the path that only you can walk, know that you're living the life that you were meant to live. And that, my friends, is how you become the you worth becoming. Let me just say this very clear so everybody gets it through their fucking dome. This is the greatest year to ever be alive in the history of mankind. If anybody has ever achieved something with two alcoholic parents, that's the blueprint that you can follow versus looking the other way. Life is binary. It's either offense or defense. You are either sitting in your seat right now on the offense or you're not. There is no half pregnant, there's no in between. You're either this or that. Do I believe that there is suppression around? Of course, but at a macro data, macro data, health, life expectancy, how much hate and negativity actually is in the complete world versus this is the best. We have it the best. And all I see is people sitting around and dwelling around dumb shit, around what they don't have, instead of focusing on what they do have. My friends, the internet is a miracle. Because where do you think the world's going? I love when, you know, I have two young kids now and I love all these parents like, Gary, you're into this social media stuff. This is terrible, right? I'm like, no dick, this is the best. Because I'm like, they're like, but I'm gonna tell my kid to spend less time on technology. I'm like, why? What world do you think your kids are gonna be living in in 20 years? Three keys to a breakthrough. Think of the area you want to have a breakthrough in right now. Your body, your money, your relationships, your career, your business, your joy, your happiness, and let's look at what it, your choices are. First element, there are three S's for a breakthrough. 
first element most people are looking for is they're looking for the right strategy. But more often you're missing the number two thing you need, and that is the right story. Because the story you have about your life, or about your business, about the area of your life that's not where you want, the area you're breaking through, your story is what's making you be stuck. What's a story? It's a belief that you tell yourself over and over again, like, I don't know the salt is, I don't know the salt is. You tell the story so often you believe it. In fact, write this down. The only thing keeping you from getting what you want, the only thing keeping you from getting what you want is the story you keep telling yourself about why you don't have it. The only thing keeping you from getting what you really want is the story you keep telling yourself about why you don't have it yet. Here's what I say. Divorce your story and marry the truth. I can teach you a million strategies that'll change you overnight. And if I get you to use a strategy and grow your business 30% like that, you are gonna get so excited that your story about your business will change, won't it? You're like, I can rip this open. I'm gonna make this thing 100% more profitable. That's why 80% of those people, I can grow them 30 to 130%. Because once I get them to have momentum, people's story changes. And when their story changes, the third and most important thing changes, their state. You've got to figure out what it is that actually makes you feel alive. And if you understand that the game that you're playing is actually a game of brain chemistry and that nothing else matters, there's no objective truth, there's no one path to glory, there's no one life for you to live. There's only the subjective truth, the thing inside you, that gut instinct, that voice that whispers to you. You've got to learn to trust that. You've got to learn to trust it by building it up. You've got to learn to trust it by taking actions and gut checking yourself and asking, is that me? Is that who I want to be? Or is that somebody else, cultural voice, my parents, my lover, whatever, trying to speak through me? And as Harley Davidson said, when writing the story of your life, don't let anyone else hold the pen. So right now ask yourself, who's writing your story? Is it you? Are you really listening to the voice in your head? Are you looking at and living by the things that give you the chills? Or are you trying to live a life that somebody else wants for you? And remember when you think about that question, what William James said, act as if what you do matters, because it does. Even if for nobody else, every step you take, every thought that you allow to permeate your mind, everything that you obsess about, your dreams, the things that you want, the hopes that you spend your time with, they matter to you because they tell you who you are. They tell you who you're trying to become. And ultimately, those things that you let monopolize your mind will become you. So if somebody else is holding the pen, if somebody else is forcing you to write something that doesn't make you feel alive, that is a life lost. And that is how you die, my friends, before you ever had a chance to live. I want to ask y'all a question. And I need some answers. Most of us, most of you that's looking at this video, don't even know it. You're not even conscious of it. But you're living your life every single day you are living your life as a reaction a living breathing walking moving reaction to other people's actions some of y'all are moving and operating within your ex and the insecurities that he put on you some of y'all are still doing things within the rules and the laws and the boundaries of somebody else's actions answer the question Really think about it before you answer. Are you living your everyday life as a reaction to somebody else's actions, good and bad? As Naval Ravikant said, the only way to truly learn something is by doing it. Yes, listen to guidance, but don't wait. That is such a powerful idea and I know right now you're listening to this because you want motivation, you want to be inspired, but my greatest fucking fear 
is that you'll get motivated, you'll get inspired, and that'll just be a declining arc for a few minutes after you listen to this video that ends with you doing nothing. And what I want, what I really hope for, and the reason that I give myself over to making these so completely, is I know some percentage of you on the other side of this will ultimately be prepared to take that first step. You will realize that the only thing that matters is action, and you will take that action. And it's in that action that your potential greatness waits. And as Martin Luther King said, take the first step in faith. You don't have to see the whole staircase. Just take the first step. You've just got to believe that you can learn. You don't have to believe that you're already capable of doing what you want. You don't have to believe that you can already build that thing that you dream. You don't have to believe that you already are extraordinary. You simply have to believe that if you take that first step, you put yourself on a journey not of execution, you put yourself on a journey of learning so that you can execute. And that, when you understand that difference, that's when you really will be on that path to greatness. And that is the thing that I want for everybody listening to this. Please understand the only thing you need to know is that you have to take the first step. Whatever the vision is that you have for your life, you absolutely can make it come true. And the process is very simple. The process is about learning. The process is about growing and getting better. It's about recognizing what you're not good at. It's about recognizing what you have to learn. It's about taking that first step on faith. On faith that you can get better. Not on faith that you're great. On faith that you can become the greatest of all time. And once you have that faith, once you know that simply being a human being puts you in this rare category of creature that can get better through pressure, through pain, through difficulty, through failure, those are the things that are going to be the building blocks of your success. But in order to begin on that road, in order to have your first glorious failure, you must first take that first step. So please. Don't waste your time being motivated or inspired. Spend every second of your time moving forward. That's how you're going to get where you want to go. One of the most powerful thoughts that I know is, will this matter? once I'm dead. Will this matter in 200 years, 300 years? How about a thousand or two thousand or a million years? See, you have an opportunity today to step into your greatness, to live the way that you want to live. But we would rather project bullshit worries and concerns into our next day, ruining our potential, ruining our opportunity to make a difference. Quit bringing depression into your own life! What is your vision? Greatness is the most demanding mistress you're ever going to encounter. And I understand the advice that I'm about to give you is not for everyone. Most people should turn this off. But if you're gonna stick with me, if you're going to listen to what I have to say, it's because you want something tremendous in your life. You wanna stand out from everyone else. You wanna do something more than other people think is possible. You literally want to stand outside the norm. And if that's the case for you, then understand that as Albert Einstein said, only one who devotes himself to a cause with his whole strength and soul can be a true master. For this reason, mastery demands all of a person. If you want to get great, if you really want to make a skill set your own, if you want to be able to do something, and at the end of the day, if you want to transform the world, if you want to make grand changes, if you want to do all of that shit, all the empty words that people spout all the time, let me tell you, the only thing that's going to separate you from all the other blowhards who are just talking words and will never do anything is to give yourself over completely, to let that obsession, let that thing that you love completely consume you. And in that, your only chance to really become great lies. 
As Franz Kafka said, don't bend, don't water down, don't try to make it logical, rather follow your most intense obsessions mercilessly. Can you do that? Can you become mercilessly obsessed? Can you let something occupy you to where all logic and reason is gone out the window and the only thing that matters is whether or not you accomplish? Will you hold yourself accountable to metrics? Will you look at the world and see, am I actually making change? Are you prepared to hold yourself to that standard? Because if you are, there is nothing you can't fucking do. If you're willing to take that responsibility on to transform yourself as a human being, if you give your self over to getting great, if you give yourself over to that obsession, if you feed it like you would feed a beast, if you feed it like you would feed a fire that can wipe out an entire mountainside, then you've got a chance. But it's got to burn within you like that. You've got to feed it like that. You've got to feed it skills. You've got to get better every day. You've got to constantly wake up and understand exactly what it is that you're building towards that and build towards it with a relentlessness that other people think is mania, that other people can see only madness in what you do. And if you can push yourself to that level, then the world will bend to your will. What I'd like for you to do right now, I want you to think about your dream. Think about your dream right now and envision it. I don't know what that dream is that you have. I don't care how far-fetched it might appear to be. I don't care how disappointing it might have been as you've been working toward that dream. But here's what I know, that that dream that you're holding in your mind, that it's possible. See, sometimes we can't say, I can do that. But what we can say, that it's possible that I can have my dream as we run toward it, as we work on it day in and day out. I mean, most people don't work on their dreams. Why? They stop growing, they stop working on themselves, they stop stretching. They stop pushing themselves. These are not risk takers. Most people have done all that they're ever going to do. They raise a family, they earn a living, and then they die. But people who are running toward their dreams, life has a special kind of meaning. That in the process of working on your dreams, you are going to incur a lot of disappointment, a lot of failure, a lot of pain, a lot of setbacks, a lot of defeats. But in the process of doing that, you will discover some things about yourself that you don't know right now. What you'll realize is that you're more powerful than you could ever begin to imagine. Align yourself with people that can encourage you, people that can empower you, people that you can learn from, people that you can grow from. Look at your life, look at where you want to go. Don't worry about your circumstances. Don't worry about your age. See, it's time now. If you want to make this your decade, you've got to start saying yes to your life. You've got to start saying yes to your dreams. Yes to your unfolding future. Yes to your potential. Why not? The future is unfolding for you right now. The future is unlimited for you right now. No one knows where you can go. No one knows what you're capable of or what's possible for you. We have the power to change our personal history, changing the direction of our lives, changing our thoughts, changing where we want to go, exploring new horizons. So as you begin to look at this decade and affirming that this is your decade, as you set goals that will make you stretch, that will bring out the best in you, as you begin to remove the negative, toxic people from your life, as you decide to take some chances in life, and that's one of the things that's very important. Viscard said, if you're not willing to risk, you cannot grow. And if you cannot grow, you cannot become your best. And if you cannot become your best, you cannot be happy. And if you can't be happy, then what else is there? People should make New Year's resolutions if they're actually watching this video on January 1st. If they're watching it on December 23rd, they should make December 23rd resolutions. waiting miraculously to when the calendar flips to start making your life better 
is silly at best and pisses me off at worst. And so whenever you're watching this, because it lives on the internet, and thus that means you could watch this on June 17th, 2017, make a resolution every day of your life because you only get one at bat. The reason people struggle with having a New Year's resolution and sticking to it is because it was a tactic to do a New Year's resolution. Hence why my first answer was right, which is when you actually decide to make a change in your life, whether about weight or job or going out with somebody or relationships, that's when you actually pull it off. It's religion, not tactics. It all comes down to the inner game, my friends. Changing your life is a change in the inner game. The outside world you can't control, but you have absolute control over this one if you learn the dynamics of what shapes you. Raise your standard. Take those three magic words and live them. Okay, I'm gonna go make this happen. I'm gonna go make this much money. I'm gonna transform my kids. I'm gonna create the ultimate relationship in my life. I'm gonna transform my body. And then you don't have strong enough reasons and you don't lose, use it. You don't follow through. It's because you didn't back up your standards with what makes those standards real, and that's rituals. Rituals are where the power is. Rituals define us. See, all the results in your life are coming from your rituals. They start with a standard and then have rituals that follow it up. So the secret to real happiness is progress. Progress equals happiness. And if we can make progress on a regular basis, we feel alive. And that's why at the beginning of the year we get this thing like, okay, I can have this fresh start. I can really do what my soul desires. I can expand. I can grow. I can improve. I can change. Or maybe better than change, I could progress. Think about that. Progress is an aliveness to it, doesn't it? You don't have to work at changing. People say all the time, now, well, I'm, I'm working on changing. Don't worry about it. You don't have to work on changing. Change is automatic. But progress is not. There is a system. There is an orbit that you've been functioning in and that most of the people around you contribute to. They're the social construct that contributes to you coming back down again. That, that, that defines you. And people are comfortable with you. They don't mind you leaping up every now and then as long as you come back down with us. In fact, people only hate on you when you try to get away. As long as you come back down and, and fit back in the system, people don't have no trouble with you. But the moment you pack up your bags and say, see you, wouldn't want to be here, I'm out of here, people have a problem with that because you're leaving the orbit. Then you're going to have to break the gravitational pull and then you're going to fly. You're going to spread your wings and you're going to sail into your destiny. There's a reason you survived. There's a reason you endured. There's a reason that you cried but didn't faint. That you crawled but you didn't collapse that you fell down but you weren't shattered. You're a new person, but before you walk out of that door, you gotta have a new mind. You cannot believe the old labels. I want you to stop speaking negativity over yourself. You are an answer. Walk like it, talk like it, plan like it. The world will change their opinion about you the day after you do. A vision is about what you're here to create. A vision that really works is one that excites you. If you say, well, my, you know, my resolution, my goal, my outcome for this month, this week, this year is to lose X number of pounds, that's okay, but it's not very compelling. It has to be a compelling vision. It's gotta have something that has the power to pull you, not something you have to push yourself to do. Those are two different kinds of motivation. Push requires willpower, and willpower never lasts. What will last is pull. Having something so exciting, so attractive, so something you desire so much that you have a hard time going to sleep at night and you get so up early in the morning to a rocket and take it to the next level. So it's gotta be a vision that's compelling. Something that you know it's gonna be a gift to make sure that it happens. And also, along with that compelling vision, you gotta have strong enough reasons that you're gonna follow through when the going gets tough. Reasons come first, answers come second. 
if you get a compelling vision and you got strong enough reasons that will push you through the tough times, you're gonna do things other people don't do. Instead of collapsing, even if you get off target, you won't go, oh, I blew it. You'll get right back on target, make the change, make things happen. And I know you've done this in many areas of your life. Just think about it again. I'm, I'm not teaching you something really new here today. I just wanna remind you of what your soul knows. You gotta change, you gotta improve, and you gotta go through a simple process fundamentally to make that progress. First step, vision that's compelling. Second step, make sure that there's strong enough reasons to follow through. Third step, you gotta review it and feel it every day. You know, what do people do with a New Year's resolution? They come up with something they kinda want. It's not a compelling vision. They don't really have strong enough reasons and they never review it again until they notice that they broke what they said they really want to have make happen because they didn't really resolve. If you resolve, you got the vision, it's compelling, you review it daily and you feel it, you envision it and you experience it. Simple as it sounds. Why is it at the beginning of a year we have this tradition, but it goes beyond tradition. It's something inside of us that makes us want to make things better. And I think part of it is the calendar gives us this idea that we can have a fresh start that we can start from fresh and have this great victory. And it's really, the calendar itself is quite arbitrary. It's wonderful to use it, but if you didn't use it effectively, let's use the calendar to serve you today. Let's just see what does it really take to make this thing happen? Because there's no denying that inside of you, the only thing that's gonna make you happy in the year ahead and the decades ahead, is gonna be having you have an experience where on a regular basis, you feel like your life is making progress. The strongest force in the whole human personality is this need to stay consistent with how we define ourselves. If you define yourself as somebody who is really conservative, you're not gonna be crazy and act nuts unless you're really drunk or something, and then you can say it's the alcohol, when it's really just you finally getting permission to be yourself, the alcohol is your excuse. If you're a really crazy person, you act crazy, outrageous, playful. You don't act conservative because that's not who you are. Very often people say, well, I can't do that. I'm not that kind of person. And I always say to people, really, when did you define yourself? When I talk about, you know, shoulds versus musts, think about your own life. I know there have been areas in your life where some point in time you just shifted and you raised the standard and your life changed. Because whatever people have their identity attached to, they live. Wants don't get met consistently, standards do. Whatever you identify, this is who I am. And so it's not so much about changing your identity as there's expanding it. You know, deciding that, you know, instead of your goal is to lose 10 pounds, which is not compelling, what if your vision was to get back to my fighting weight? You know, this, this year, this month, this next 90 days, I'm gonna transform my body. I'm gonna take on a new challenge. I'm gonna find some technique or strategy. There's a million of them that can reframe myself where I want to feel younger, stronger, more vibrant than ever before. Here's my reasons, because I want the energy to really make my life work, because it's tough out there and I want to be stronger than I've ever been before. If you are where you want to be physically, you have very different rituals than if you're not where you want to be physically. If you're overweight, you and I both know you got a different ritual than if you're physically fit. The only thing that's going to make you happy, my friend, in this year or any other, is to step up. It's to raise the standard, it's to discover what you're capable of and feel that incredible power of pushing through whatever's holding you back and get to the other side of more of your true self. That's what this game's all about. Don't let this year be like last. And if last year was great, still don't let it be that way. Raise the standard. If your life is perfect and extraordinary, you darn well know you're not gonna be happy unless you keep making it better. That's what makes us feel alive. It's not what we get that make us happy, it's who we become and what we're able to give because we become more. Once you discipline yourself in one area of your life, you feel yourself doing it in other areas as well. And I always say something that my original teacher taught me, I always remind people, there's always two pains in life. There's the pain of discipline, or there's the pain of regret. And discipline weighs ounces, as my friend Jim Rohn taught me, regret weighs tons. You don't have regret. If you make the changes in yourself, you're gonna be proud this year and no amount of money or accolades from other people can mirror the feeling of being proud of knowing you've taken back control of your life or you've taken a great life to another level. Because once you do that, you have something you can give other people, whether it be your kids or your friends or your family. And ultimately that's what life's about.